Hello everybody, John Hurst here, a political activist, singer, writer, and poet at large. Uh, today my commentary is political, so no music today, although I did post a little bit of music yesterday. Um, my comments today are about society at large and, and a society that is continuing to allow Donald Trump to put the vulnerable and the needy at risk. It's often said, you know, that societies can be judged by its willingness to defend the well-being of its most vulnerable populations. And when it comes to this pandemic, America's youngest, namely children, and oldest, namely seniors, are again being put at risk, not just by administration, but by a country that is continuing to allow this administration to put especially vulnerable populations at needless risk. Let's take school children, for example. Now, of course, we all want our school children to be back in school, growing, learning, uh, achieving the skills that they'll need to be productive as adults. That said, the pandemic is such that to force schools to open prematurely before the pandemic is under control is morally indefensible. You don't sacrifice the lives of children to meet a political agenda. And more importantly, a civilized society would not tolerate the decision of any president or administration, whether it's Republican or Democrat, Libertarian or Green, or whatever it is they want to call themselves, um, to put the lives of children and seniors at risk. So again, we have a kind of blaring example of the fact that while we all want to blame Trump, and he's truly someone who deserves blame, we should not avoid the fact that Trump is only allowed to be as successful as we, as a collective society, allow him to be. When I say successful, I mean successful in carrying out his objectives, which are truly heinous in nature. Civilized societies do not put children and seniors at needless risk. Now, are there answers to the challenge of continuing to educate our children? Yes, it's called online learning. Okay? And what is again shameful about this society that we live in right now is that this society is allowing not just Trump, but states and governors and other people to cut funding for online programs as a way of forcing schools to reopen. I can't think of a more immoral thing than to say to a parent or to a constituent, yes, I demand that you sacrifice your children or put your children's lives at risk so I can adhere to a political agenda in which human lives mean nothing but satiating the demands of a bigot, whether it's a federal bigot or a state bigot or a state governor, um, simply to satisfy their demands. Now, again, this is a sobering reflection. It does not reflect a lack of love by myself or anyone actually like me. We raise our voices in outrage because we feel we have a moral obligation to do so. I raise my voice because I do not think that the lives of children and seniors should ever be sacrificed to satisfy a political agenda. And that is exactly what many governors, what this federal government is prepared to do, to simply achieve an ideological purpose. It is a sad reflection on who we are as a society because society as a whole are enabling the dysfunctional and immoral actions of so many governors. Okay, as my commentary today, uh, stay well, look after yourselves, and remember, let's vote in 2020, not just on the federal level, but on the state level and get rid of 
people or remove them from office, I should say, just to be clear, who have no respect for the well-being of this country or do not believe that every single ethnic or political group in this country in terms of demographics, that uh, their rights and their well-being should have as much priority as extremist genders. So let's vote these people out so that we can stop putting the lives of America's seniors and our precious children at risk. You have a great day, everyone. Stay safe, be well, and look after each other.